Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to do this Fred Flintstone character. He's roughly about 13 inches high by 6 inches across. Now I've tried something different on this one. Normally with my templates, I would just do a quick online search and basically print it out. And as always, put the template on there, put my carbon paper underneath and draw around it. Now on the last two or three projects, I've been using tracing paper. Now this is ideal if somebody who hasn't got a printer and you don't want to waste papers and stuff. Cheap tracing paper. You can buy a booklet like this for next to nothing and you get 60 sheets in there of your tracing paper. Now there will be apps out there and sites that you can go on and put in six inches by 13 inches and it'll print it all out for you but if you've only got the basic materials and tools to work with tracing paper is another option now as you can see from that one i've already done that one literally drawn it out with pencil then i use pen to go over the top with the carbon paper underneath and that is printed on there no problem whatsoever that's come out really nice that one as you can see from that, and that's a template we're going to use today. Now the way I do these, obviously, I'll just show you quickly. I actually trace them off a tablet. If I can just pop this on here just to show you. So here's our Freddy Flintstone. Fred Flintstone. This is the one we will be doing today. Now the good thing about my tablet... It's literally just five and inch, half inches across, which is not far off the width of my piece of wood. That just leaves me a quarter of an inch at either side. So I know when I zoom in with this, big or small, if I make it just to the maximum, so literally just so his toes are touching either side, it'll come down a bit smaller. I know when I trace this out, it will fit this piece of wood. No problem whatsoever. And all I do is if we just trace that out, like so, with the tracing paper, to show you quickly. You can, it can be done, it's, uh, it's awkward, and you don't want to be touching the screen too much. But basically you put that on there, a bit of tape on the corners maybe, trace it round, and then you can slide your paper across, slide your template down, the pattern at the same time, match that on there, and basically draw out the rest of it. And there we go. So you've wasted no printing paper, no inks or anything. And it's simple, simple, easy enough to do. If you're using four inch wood, you can shrink that down. So it's four inches across. If you're using three inch, you can go down smaller or bigger. If you're doing a really big piece, you can actually turn that on its side like so. Zoom that in as big as you want. My occasion, it's eight and a half inches. Literally draw that out. And then slide it down and slide it down so you can get a really big project it takes a little bit more work involved but i enjoy it this way of doing things obviously have no rush and just take your time so that's just another option after print out your templates okay let's move on swiftly so we've got that all drawn out we did our carbon remember we had our paper on top we've gone over the top that's come out nice. We can actually use that one again and again if we want to. Now the bits we're going to use today, and we're going to go for something a little bit different. Normally when I do a router project, I would route out, let's say, the feet, the arms, the face, inside the mouth, inside the eyes. Either or, or you could route out the garment he's got on, even the black spots, route out the scarf and whatever today and i've done a couple of these before the only routing we are going to do is actually on the lines itself now it's easy to do yet again it's harder the good thing is, if you're routing on this middle piece you could start in the middle and just slowly nibble at it to get to the edge because we are routing on the lines which is something i always say not to do we only have one chance at it if you start coming over here somewhere, there's no rubbing it out and going back. So there's a little bit more pressure. 
But yeah, they're a lot easier to do because all we're going to do is route out the lines. Once we've done all that, we'll put some black paint over this, sand it all down nicely, leaving us a nice black crispy line around everything. And then we'll get our paint and literally paint it all in. Before that, we will get a scroll saw and cut it out to the shape as you see it now. You could leave it on that piece of wood if you wanted to. Okay, as always for me, I like to use CNC bits. Normally I would have end milling bits to, re to route out these areas, but we are just doing the lines. These come in different degrees. These are 20s and 30s. You can get 15, 10s, and I believe this is a 60 out there somewhere. They do have a Dremel size shaft on them, a 3.175. They will fit a Dremel, no problem. If you want to use a Dremel attachment, router attachment, instead of using a full size router. You will need an adapter collet, like so. 6.35 millimeter. That literally just slots in there to the silver end. And the dark section, that will go into your router if it's a quarter inch router. These adapters will go up to half an inch. You also need a bigger size. And we'll get a nice depth that we need and literally just go around all the lines. And then we'll come back when we're ready to put the black paint in. Okay, that's enough talking. Let's start routing this one out. Right, you can see from that we've made it round in one piece with our CNC bits. 20 degree we use on that one. And that's fine, that's deep enough, a couple of mil maybe, just deep enough to hold the paint inside. Plus, it's enough that when we sand over the top, we're not going to lose any of those finer lines. So, that's plenty deep enough and plenty wide enough for our little project today. Now I just want to generally just clean these out inside. A good old tap on the back is plenty. That will get rid of most of your dust. But just a little few rough edges around here. Remember, just cheap, cheap fencing wood for me. So what you see basically is what you get. So if you've just got sandpaper, just make yourself a little strip like that. And that is just enough to get in there like so. Just to give it a general clean up and tidy up. Quick tap on the back and you're good to go. I do like to use the flexi cable which attaches to the end of your Dremel or a rotary tool with an engraving bit in. Quite a pointed one this one obviously because we've got a narrow line to fit inside. They come in packs of 30 like this next to nothing and they're ideal just for cleaning out with. So I'll just generally pop this on and just go down in them lines just to remove basically any debris or bits of dust what's lying around inside. So a general tidy up, a little bit of sanding down and then we'll go on to the painting side of things. Right, that's enough sanding down for me. 
we are going to sand over this all again at the end once the paint's gone and stuff so we don't have to do crazy with the front bits the top bit should i say the main bits we need to clear out is those route out areas nice and clean so we can get the paint inside now painting wise you can spray that with black paint no problem i just prefer to use a brush and paint is touched today well black lines the outlines and then we'll use acrylic paints to cover the rest in now it's just a simple case of just putting it on get a nice flat stiffer brush and just get in there and just paint it in i have no paint uh, wood sealer on here or anything there is a wood sealer you can buy if you were concerned about the paint bleeding into the side walls if you imagine your wood being made like straws and you've cut the straws in half when you put your paint in they can bleed into the side walls so you don't get a nice crispy finish I'm not overly bothered on, the, bothered on these uh, little projects of mine. Plus, we are going to paint all this inside anyway. So the only bleed we would get on the outside. And I do find this fencing wood is pretty good for not bleeding. So just bear that in mind. Wood sealer. If you're a bit concerned about how crispy your lines are going to be, you can buy a separate wood sealer. And you just brush it in. It looks a bit like milk. Once it's dry, that will seal all your side walls in. And hopefully you won't get any paint bleed. So literally, as for filling this in, just a simple case of doing that all the way around. It's a slow, slow process, but it's an enjoyable process as well. Now you might think that you've uh, cleared it, uh, sort of say painted it in nicely. And once it dries, you'll see little white areas like that maybe. So you might have to go over it a couple of times. Another option it's have a black marker pen with a fine tip on and on some areas like if we we're painting these black here you can actually go over it with a marker pen and just dab it on just to make sure you've covered it all correctly so we get the general idea i'm just going to bung this on here no problem this dries really quick and then we'll come back when we're ready for sanding this one down to get those nice black lines hopefully giving us some kind of shape. We'll come back later. Okay, we've gone all the way around with our sander. That's removed that paint nicely, leaving us a nice black outline just like the original template hopefully now i've literally just gone around with a pencil just freehand and get that for you to see down here just a little border all the way around just to give me something to follow with the scroll saw and that obviously goes around the full project now i did say previously you could leave that on there that's a, that'd be a nice base for that to sit on. Maybe put some linseed oil on the back. Nice varnish to cover it all. But I'm literally just going to cut it out. Same way as my previous little projects. Now for me, I like to use a spiral blade. With my old dropper scroll saw, I have to use these adapter clamps. On your more modern saws, that will just clamp in to your saw. No problem, top and bottom. You want to feel smooth on the way down. And rough on the way up. These are spiral blades. You can also get straight blades and pinless blades and pin blades, should I say. They're just my personal preference. So we'll cut this out now on the scroll saw.
Right, that's it. We've cut all the way around with our Pegasus number no. 5 spiral blade. I've not took this out of this wood yet. I just want to leave it in because people do complain about it not being a smooth cut and stuff. And it's awkward for you to see on here, but I'm quite happy with that. To say it's rough fencing wood, I think that personally cuts out really nice. Now you do get your fluffy edges on, like any of your saws, well most of your blades. A bit of sandpaper, a couple of minutes like that. And that will take all those edges off nicely. So that's our general shape we've got going there. What I will do is just literally just go around with the paper now, like so. Just to round off those edges and get rid of those bits. Okay, we'll come back when I've sanded this down. Right, we've sanded down the edges, just with sandpaper, nothing fantastic. Just to round it off slightly and smooth it out. We've took all our little fuzzies off the back and now we're ready for painting. Now I'm going to use acrylic paints today. I do like to water them down slightly, just so it makes more of a stain than an actual paint itself. And it will just soak in nicely to the wood. We'll paint the full piece the way it should be painted, hopefully. Just leaving the little edge all the way around. Once that paint's obviously dry, we'll put boiled linseed oil on that. On the edges and down the sides. Just to darken that wood back again. And then once that's dry, we'll give it a full spray with crystal clear or the op varnish. And hopefully we should be towards the finishing line. Right, that's it. This little project is over. Now I gave him three or four coats of the 151 Yacht Varnish. As you can see from that, just give it a nice shine and a little bit more protection with it going outside. Like any wood, no matter what you put on it, in years to come, it will all start changing and altering. So I'm hoping to get a good couple of years out of this Yacht Varnish. Or the crystal clear that I normally use. There is better finishes out there. It's entirely up to you guys what you prefer to use. We put the linseed oil down the side, remember, just to darken that wood down. And then we sprayed it with the yacht varnish just to finish it off. And that's it. This little project is more or less finished. For hanging purposes, if I can just show you quickly. We routed out a slot in the back there, as you can see. And that's with... Uh, T-slot bit, quarter inch shaft on that one, so you don't need the adapter. And that's a 5 16 You basically put it into your router, lower it down, route across, route back, and lift it out. And that's good as gold. That's all you need. And that basically will give you a nice slot just to get your screw in there and slide it across. The more you have that in your wood, the tighter it is to fit that on. So that will be quite firm. And that will hang like that, no problem whatsoever. Obviously on your bigger projects, you could get away with two slits, as long as them two holes line up, no problem. So that's him, Fred Flintstone. Routed out lines on fencing wood, cut out on a scroll saw with a Pegasus spiral blade number five. And then we use acrylic paints to paint him with. And then we finished off with a nice yacht varnish, just give him that bit of shine. And that's it, this little project is over. Thanks very much for watching.